Welcome back to the KDPG Sunday edition. We're talking about last week's horrific shooting spree at Squirrel Hills Tree of Life Synagogue, which took the lives of 11 people, including two special needs brother, brothers and a number of elderly congregants and injured six others, including four Pittsburgh police officers. Joining us now is Yvonne Maher, Executive Vice President of Development and Donor Services at the Pittsburgh Foundation. Its Critical Needs Campaign has pledged $150,000 to match donations to organizations supporting victims of the Tree of Life shooting. Yvonne, thank, Yvonne, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, what has been, what has surprised you most? Working at the Pittsburgh Foundation as the, the nation and the world have learned about the horror in Pittsburgh, what kind of response have you seen where you are? It, it's been an absolutely overwhelming response, both nationally uh, locally and internationally, not just from my colleagues across the Community Foundation world in, in this country, uh, but also personally from my family who, who lives uh, across the globe. Uh, the, the reaction in terms of my phone buzzing and the ringing saying, are you okay? Uh, this community where this happened, we've been there, we've lived there, we've walked there, these are our neighbors. Um, how could this happen? And then the next question is, what can we do to help? And what are, what are the offers of help that the foundation has been receiving? The, the Pittsburgh Foundation itself is, is um, sprung to action and we've uh, launched our uh, pittsburghgives.org platform. Uh, this is a platform that we've used for many years uh, around local critical needs, whether it's food, shelter, housing insecurities. And uh, we mobilized that technology within a few days so that our folks from around the country, Pittsburgh expats who've contacted us, could give back to the community that they, they know and love. Uh, community foundations are all across the country. They're in every major metropolitan city. So our inboxes were filled by our colleagues around the country who wanted to do something as well. So we launched the, the website. Uh, hundreds of donations are coming through. We'll be live till the end of our midnight on Sunday. And we're gonna match all of those donations. We're gonna get them out to the community as quickly as we can. Uh, fair to say you've never seen this type of response. To a, to a need before in your experience at the foundation? I've, I've never experienced uh, this type of, of terror and trauma uh, in this community and it's overwhelming to see the support but Pittsburghers are resilient. We've heard that many, many times over the last week and uh, what's in, in, it's so uh, overwhelming the Pittsburgh expats really mobilize into action and the folks who care and who visited here many, many times want to support this community in any way that they can. Do you feel it was very important for you to get your message out there and in, in, uh, so that you know, people know there's a safe place to donate that you know, we've heard warnings from the FBI about you know, non-credible places that people are uh, popping up, um, but for your organization to get out there in front of it. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, when, when we heard that there were some fraudulent websites, that even spurred us more so that people would have a trusted place, a trusted resource that they could give and that the money would be matched and no fees, but that they would feel safe about the gift that they were giving. Um, it, it's, it's so unfortunate. There are scams and the FBI are investigating uh, various scams and bad websites out there. It's an unfortunate thing in this time of crisis crisis, so for sure we want to be there for our community and provide that resource uh, to anybody who wants to give. People who know you and know that you work for the Pittsburgh Foundation, maybe they've been coming up to you or contacting you over the past week and saying, Yvonne, I, I'd like to do something to yeah. help. I don't know what to do. Yeah. What are you telling people? Just I, individuals. Yeah, so I think that there are multiple phases to this. I think the immediate phase right now is for people who want to support uh, the entities that were immediately affected. But I know our community leaders are meeting as we speak um, and talking to each other and exchanging emails about what's next. And I think as a community foundation, that's our role and we should be present when those conversations are going to take place. And I think we'll be a resource going forward. I don't think that we know yet what we need or what we can do. We know we have the people, we know we have organizations that get along with each other and partner and want to do better for this community. And we will be part of that and we will share that message as, as it evolves over time. I, I think we're in a, in a state of shock right now, and I, but I think that we're planning for the next phase and how we can, how we can be part of making this community an even better place than it is. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you hearing messages uh, from people who are donating and, and you know, sending along any kind of messages to the community as well? Yeah, we're, we're hearing everything from 
from we're giving out cones on Saturdays to free beer and can, will that be matched? And the answer is yes, we're going to match everything we can. Um, I, I, I think there's a, a spirit and energy in this community about being innovative and creative in, in how to raise money and also to bring a sense of um, uh, community and safety for those people. So whether it's beers or ice cream or uh, mobile trucks and food, we're going to match everything. Uh, they're going to have an experience, and I think that's the Pittsburgh way. It's uh, it's sad, but it's it's no doubt true that something else will will happen in the future and take Pits attention away from Pittsburgh, just as happened in Charleston and in at the Pulse nightclub and Sandy yeah. Hook and on and on Parkland. Um, do you see the seeds right now for something that can outlast just this current intense attention? And, and could this change the philanthropic structure of our community going forward on a permanent basis? Yeah, I, I, think, the, I think what you're seeing with this particular incident actually is a legacy that Pittsburgh has had for, for hundreds of years. We always talk about the great big foundations and the legacies that people have left to Pittsburgh. We're unique in that sense. We've traveled the country and, and not seen the number of private foundations and philanthropy um, that has been given back to this community. Mr. Hillman being um, the most recent person to endow a significant amount of money at a, at a foundation. Community foundations are different because they're made up of individuals. So we have a thousand donors with a thousand funds with all kinds of interests. So that legacy of philanthropy has been in Pittsburgh. I just think that they're all coming together around this particular tragedy, this particular incident. It doesn't mean that um, they won't come together around another issue. I think what you're just seeing is that energy that Pittsburghers have about giving back and it's manifesting in, in all kinds of creative ways. So I do think this is the first phase. I think there are multiple phases to come. I think this country and this city will, will continue around and respond to this tragedy in a way that's very powerful. I hope you're right. Uh, I just want to uh, invite people to go to jccpgh.org. The JCC in Squirrel Hill is hosting a gathering of clergy on Thursday morning. If you go to jccpgh.org and click on love and kindness, you can get those details. Um, Yvonne, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we, um, I'm sorry, are we taking a break? Okay, we will take a break and be back with